Hi, my name's Simon and welcome to another video where I'm going to share some hints and tips with you of how you might use OBS with Skype or Zoom when you're teaching online. In this video, I want to concentrate on some of the problems that you might encounter when you're using a green screen or when you're chroma keying and a few solutions to help you overcome those problems. Perfectly normally, perfectly reasonably, when you first start using a green screen, you will want perfection. You will want your effects to be the best in the world. You will see this as the height of professionalism if you can recreate what they can do in Hollywood. That's precisely what I thought when I started to use a green screen. But over a period of time, I realized one, it's not practically possible, and number two, which compromises I was willing to accept, and number three, how I could overcome the biggest problems. So let me talk you through uh, some of the issues that I deal with, even today, and how I overcome those issues. When you're using a green screen, the most important thing is lighting and getting the lighting correct. Now, this is a question of space and this is a, qu a question of equipment. It's a question of space because most teachers, like me, don't teach in great big halls where you can put lights everywhere. Just to remind you where I work, this is a picture of my office. And as you can see, I'm tucked away into the corner here. This is where I sit, this is where I do my work. And you can see that there I've got three light sources. I've got a front light here, I've got a back light which, back, which uh, backlights the green screen to try and pr provide a uniform colour, and of course I've got a ceiling light which is here. This is not ideal. I should be having light from different sources, I should be having, I should have balanced light, but of course this is practically, at least for the budget and for the time and the expertise that I have, impossible. So I've got to do the best that I can. So it is a question of, with the limited budget and the limited resources you have, setting things up, playing with them, trial and error, does this work, does that work, and then seeing what the best possible result is. And even then, the result might not be perfect. For example, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but let me see if I've still got my pen tool here, but you can probably see just here, right there, that little patch of white light. That is an example of my green screen not being positioned properly. In this case, this is my green screen standing too far back and the ceiling light shining down in front of the green screen. And so what we've got there, we've got an unbalanced uh, green screen in terms of color, and you can see that imperfection. So how do you deal with something like that? Well, you can of course spend a long time moving things around, or you can just be a little bit creative. So here are some tips that you might use to get rid of that. The first and easiest thing that you might do, and I'm gonna bring across OBS here, is simply cheat a little bit. What do I mean by that? You just grab the web camera, and you move it across the screen. There we go, problem solved. This is another reason why being stuck in the corner is a good thing. You can simply move the web camera, move it across, and all of a sudden, the problem disappears. Similarly, if you had a problem in the other corner, you would just move the web camera over here, and the problem goes away over there. So use, um, use the mobility you have within OBS, uh, and the functionality you have with the webcam, in order to eliminate issues like this. There is an option as well to crop the image of your web camera on OBS. This is used through the transform function. Um, if I try and show you this very, very quickly, we would go, where would it be now? It would be here, under transform, and then you would have edit transform, and then you've got these options here, crop left, crop right, crop top, crop button, and then you would just adjust the margins and then you would see um, these red lines if I just get the pen. I know this is a bit confusing. You, there's lots of information on the screen, but as you're moving, um, as you're changing these values, you're changing the, uh, the edges of your webcam and what the webcam can see. So this is another way to crop the image and get rid of light imperfections such as that white light. 
Another way you might choose to uh, get rid of that white light, let me just clear the screen, is by using um, Word. There we go. One advantage of a white or a bright backdrop, and I talk about my virtual whiteboard quite a lot, is that it removes a lot of those light impurities. So if I bring myself back across, the light imp impurity, that, or I'll call, I'll call it the light impurity, but the error is there, but you can't see it because of the Word document. If I make the Word document disappear, then you can still see it. So this is another reason why using a Word document uh, to show whatever it is that you want to show your students is a good thing to do. And you can also use web pages to get the same effect and so on. If you're not happy moving the image around or cropping the web camera, or it's simply not practical to do this and you have to rely on your lighting to get a perfect or a, the best possible effect that you can with your green screen, if there was one light in my experience, that you should worry about. It's the backlight. And let me just show you this one here. So this light, and I'll try and get my pen tool out. This light here, which is resting on the armchair, this is the most important light. This is providing a uniform color, as much as it's possible to, on the green screen. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on my backlight, and hopefully that error will, to a certain extent, disappear. Okay, so I'm back now, and as you can see, if I get my pen tool out again, there was an error, oh, there was an error around about here, but as you can see, that error has now gone, and that error has gone because the backlight is, is now shining onto the back of the green screen, and it's trying its best to provide a uniform color of the green screen. So if there was one light you should think about, it would be the backlight to the backlight so you can try to get that uniform color. Because if you've got a uniform color, then the chroma keying becomes that much easier. In my experience, and you'll have a look in the many videos that I've done for YouTube, um, if I'm talking about the color of my face, Sometimes I am, there's too much color, sometimes I'm pale gray, sometimes I'm in the middle, sometimes one video looks like this, sometimes one video looks like that. That is a compromise I've learned to live with. Simply speaking, I don't think, unless I change my setup completely, I don't think I'm going to get the lighting right in order to get that same effect day after day after day after day, because I'm balancing just too many light sources. I've got um, the lights, I've got the three light sources in my room, I've got the blackout curtain here, which is doing its best to stop the shining morning sun coming through the window, but inevitably there's going to be some sun coming through, there's going to be light bouncing off the walls, uh, basically there's a whole lot of things going on in front of the green screen in terms of light balance, that it's going to be difficult for me to get the same effect with every single video. So it's simply speaking something that I've learned to live with. Some days are better than other days, it's just unfortunately I would need to invest a lot more time, potentially a lot more uh, money, in trying to get that same consistent effect video on video on video on video. Okay, one more thing to add uh, in this video about using green screens, and that is to say, be aware of what color green your green screen is. Now, if I select the green screen in my case, and I just turn off the green screen, you can see that the I've got a very light green screen. You might have a dark green screen. Why is this important? Well, it's important because of what you might be wearing. So, for example, this is a green jumper. It's a different shade of green, but I can wear this green jumper and you can see me. It's not going to be a problem. But the lighter this green gets, the more yellow this green gets, the more invisible my shirt becomes. Now, that gives me this floating head effect, which might be quite funny for the student uh, to, or at least surprising at least, for the student, um, but it's not really what I want the student or, uh, or it's not the effect I want to see in my videos. So you've got to be aware of what you're wearing in relation to the color of the green screen behind you. Now let me turn the green screen back on. Okay, so there we go. So the green screen is now back on. 
But it's not just your clothes. Um, one lesson um, that I did, or a number of videos that I did, I was working with Gold First. Now, Gold First is a green book, which is very, very similar to the green background that I have. So when I pick up Green First, like this, you can see that actually the green disappears, you have this transparent effect, and this actually starts to look a bit like Gold Advanced, because Gold Advanced does look like this blue. So green books, uh, you have to be a, you have just have to be aware of what you're showing to the web camera sometimes. So green green books tend to disappear. Not only green books, but yellow doesn't do so well either. So um, once again, this all depends on the tone of your green screen. If I had a dark green green screen and the chroma keying was set up for that, then you would be able to see this yellow book without any problems. But because I've got a light green green screen, then that's also something that you've got to be careful of. So what can you do in this case? Simply explain. Listen guys, this is what the book is. Unfortunately, you can't see it very well. Uh, show a picture on Amazon of what it does look like and the stu your student will forgive you. Okay, so we've come through a few things in this video. So I just want to quickly recap what you might do in order to avoid green screen problems with the minimum of fuss. First of all, move the web camera to get the problem off the edge of the page. Crop the web camera is another option, but if you can move the camera, web camera, then you don't have to worry about cropping it. The only problem would be if the imperfection or the error is directly above your head, in which case, just then you would have to crop the camera. Just make sure that you don't move up and down too much. Use a white or light background, for example, like Microsoft Word, which can you can then use for vocabulary and other exercises. You can use a backlight to your green screen to try and provide a uniform color. Let me just write that down there. And be aware of the tone of your green screen if you're going to be showing your students any materials or with the clothes that you're wearing. Of course, there is plenty of information on the internet about this, whether it's YouTube channels, YouTube videos, uh, web pages, etc., etc. There are lots of people writing about green screens because lots of people are using green screens, not just teachers, but gamers, uh, businesses, and very, many, many, many different other sets of people. So you're going to see resources and help from many different areas. And also, please don't forget about OBS and the help forums that they have. There's also lots of information there. Okay, guys, um, if you've got any questions about the content that I've covered in this video, then please leave a comment below. If you want me to have a look, if you want me to create any more content to deal with the problems that you specifically have, then just let me know what those issues are in the comments below, and I'll produce some content to help you. Okie dokie, thank you very much, and I'll see you again soon.